Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome back to another episode of our Plaid Zoo franchise mode. Let's play. We're gonna dive right back into Elite Zoo South. Yet again, as I said last time, we are back on track, folks. We are back on schedule. Hopefully, for a prolonged period of time. I was actually a little worried. Again, it's just my luck, honestly, that uh, last time when I was trying to record the previous episode, uh, you know, internet was dead for like three quarters of the day. And then when today's episode came to record, those of you that watched the uh, live stream on Friday, not the Planet Zoo and the Suzerain live stream, there was no Planet Zoo live stream, the Suzerain live stream will have uh, heard the beginnings of renovations for the day by my upstairs neighbor, and that decided to uh, get in my way for most of the day. It's, it's funny, it's just like, that's just my luck. Anyway, that's all besides the point, because the episode is happening, and that's what matters, or at least I think that's what matters, right? I'm really excited for this one. We're going to do a couple of things that I... Well, it's going to be a couple of uh, a couple of very different things uh, that I again I always like getting involved and in. I always like doing between you know adding a new animal. I'm I'm hoping we'll be adding a new animal. I'm almost certain we'll be adding a new animal. But there is something else that I also want to spend some time doing today. We might not have a time lapse, um, but just because we won't have a time lapse doesn't mean we won't be adding a new animal. Again, just to be clear. Now, again, folks, I just want to say. If you've been enjoying this series, if you do want to see it make a proper comeback, please don't hesitate to let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. Like I've said a couple of times in the past, especially after a break has been taken, the likes and comments, they kind of have that extra weight. Um, likes, comments, and, 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 and watch time ultimately have a lot of weight in uh, YouTube going, oh hey, uh, people are enjoying this, I should you know send it around a bit more. And right now what's happening is... Uh, you know, many of you who were watching this series before I was kind of forced to take the hiatus uh, are no longer getting notifications, for example. Uh, and that, of course, is a bit of a bummer for those of you who are no longer getting no notifications uh, and, and, and wish you were. You can't even hear me saying this because YouTube probably hasn't told you this episode exists. Uh, but so it's a bummer for them, of course. It's also just like not good in terms of overall performance and stuff like that. Uh, and and it obviously, as you can imagine, it helps <laughs> to have uh, well-performing videos on the, uh, the channel. I'm sure you can understand that. Uh, but folks, again, if you leave your likes and comments, it can make a very big difference in just um, sort of reminding YouTube that yes, people are still interested in this series. And you know, maybe you're not. And if you're not, then then that's perfectly cool too. Uh, but if you are, then then leave those likes and comments because not only is there the whole, you know, algorithm conversation, uh, but also for me personally, it just lets me know what people are interested in. So uh, don't just think about, you know, uh, you know, oh, algorithm this, algorithm that, and all that kind of stuff. I like to look at the numbers of likes and comments, and I like to read through all the comments as well, just to get an understanding of what people are enjoying, what you're not enjoying, what I should tweak, what I should improve, what I should change, uh, and, and how we can all have a better time together. Now, I did read the comments of the previous episode. Uh, I didn't get a chance to sit down and respond to every single one. I'm trying to kind of revamp how I approach con uh, comments as well, uh, compared to how I was doing them before. Uh, I'll still be reading all the comments. Please keep that in mind. That, that'll never change. It, it's too... You for real? Like, I guess the nearest bin is far away. Uh, that'll never change, though. I'll, I'll never, I'll never stop reading comments. I enjoy reading comments way too much for that. But um, uh, in in terms of how I approach uh, my, you know, my 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 multi read slash note taking uh, approach, I might need to like revamp that a little bit, uh, especially for the next little while, as we still you know try to settle down into the new place and as free time is. Uh, is uh not very forthcoming um so uh just something to let you just just want to let you guys know that I, I am still reading all the comments even though you uh might not have seen any uh responses or anything like that uh it doesn't mean i'm not paying attention to uh, your thoughts your opinions and uh you know what you what you have to say for example i, I got some good feedback with regards to the uh, audio uh, again that was one of the uh, more kind of direct questions I asked in terms of, you know, how's the audio feeling i got some feedback on that front uh there is definitely yeah there is uh I think I mentioned this last time as well, but there is some work that I want to do for the audio still because uh, while I like it overall, it does have a couple of issues that I'm hoping. Uh, oh, this is gonna like, stick out. Oh, that's okay. Uh, it uh, there are a couple of issues that I'm hoping I can relatively easily solve. Uh, but before I can get to solving them, I first need to check on. Well, not check on, but I first need to uh, acquire some furniture because that might actually directly impact 
uh, the audio quality of the room. Actually, it won't, it's not that it might impact the audio quality of the room, it definitely will. Uh, just how this stuff works, uh, you know, audio bounces around and all that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I do intend to, to make some tweaks still. You'll, you'll probably hear it change. Uh, if, if you're of the type that's uh, particularly particular about audio, you'll probably hear it change a couple times uh, until it finally, you know, settles into its final form, as it were. But, uh, but yeah, I got some great, uh, great feedback. A lot of it lines up with how I've been feeling about the audio myself, which is good, which means I'm not the only one who's uh, hearing it and feeling it that way. Um, but yeah, anyway, sorry, I, 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 it might seem strange that I ramble so much about audio, but audio, as I was saying last session as well, is such a big part of the experience, I think, that, uh, that I, that I do, uh, I do take it, uh, I do take particular, um, interest in it, I guess, you could say. Uh, I'm also just a, um, I also find audio to be fascinating, uh, in, in how it works and, 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 and what makes it tick versus not. Um, let's go ahead and put one more down, I think over here. That ought to do the trick, because I'll tell you what makes me tick. Like, what, what, what ticks me off <laughs> is uh, litter. Still, some things don't change. Uh, I'll go ahead and pop you down over there, because I can't put it over there for some reason. Until I actually put one down on this side, fair enough. Uh, but yeah, that should help a little bit, I think, with the, uh, the litter problem. That should be good. But yeah, folks, anyway, all that rambling to say this. If you're having a good time, let me know. Leave a like, leave a comment. As always, makes a very big difference. Um... Let's me know what you guys are thinking. All right, so that's all the bins over here put down. But on the topic of bins, those aren't the only uh, receptacles we'll be putting down. Uh, again, I have your reminders, fortunately, to remind me that the where's my enclosure is such a. It, it honestly, this zoo has it's such a it's such a massive zoo. It is such a massive zoo. It is hard to like keep a track of where I am sometimes. All right, meerkats and aardvarks. I feel like this like lion-esque color scheme is still the way to go, you know? Just just cuz like it has they have like similar tones. I mean, I guess we could go with a slightly more a slightly more brown look. We could go a little bit darker. Uh and with you as well, we could go just a little bit more. There, there we go. I don't mind that actually. That's, that's a nice color combination. I love the uh uh, like the 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 the, the two tone look, but like the very slightly two tone, not drastically two tone, just a very slightly two tone. I'm a big fan of that. Like printing black on black. Like if you ever print with black ink on black paper, you get that very nice subtle, like almost like a gloss finish kind of a look. Big fan of that. Big fan of that. And there's nothing like not even using ink on black paper, but instead hitting it with like a spot UV or or or. Anyway, <laughs> going too far back into my, uh, my my previous world there. All right, let's put one other one down over here, I think. I really... Uh, not the big... I, it just takes up so much space, but at the same time, it looks weird when it kind of bisects the, uh, the, the, the the barrier, you know, the wall. Like, it's just like, like, that doesn't look very good. I don't like that. I don't like that. So we'll, we'll put it over here. And let's go ahead and see if we can't put... Uh, at least one down. No, this is a ramp, so we can't do this. This is this whole thing is a ramp, so we can't put one down over here. Okay, fair enough. So we're gonna rely on donations at the uh, the top of this uh, section, um, rather than rather than down over here. I'm gonna, by the way, wait for a couple more name suggestions. I did get one or two for this space. I'll wait for a couple of more name suggestions, mainly because I feel like a lot of people haven't realized the series is back. A lot of people might be. Um, it, it didn't occur to me at the time that this would be the case, but of course it would be. A lot of people don't realize the series is back. A lot of people did get it served, but we're like, oh, I'll watch it later. So I'm going to give some people some time to, to catch up. Because again, like, no, quite a few people, I think, haven't yet seen that last episode. Uh, so before I kind of jump ahead and, and, and jump the gun, as it were, uh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll give folks some time and an opportunity to catch up and, and get a couple more name suggestions. Uh, with that said, if you did watch the previous episode and you have name suggestions now that you didn't have back then, feel free to add those in the comments as well. There's no reason not to. Uh, but yeah, just something to, uh, to, 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 to let you guys know why I'm not putting a name down just quite yet. Now, with the uh, donation bins down, there was, I need a male giant anteater. That's another thing. There's a couple of management elements that we need to take care of today. Uh, but like I said, we will be adding, uh, at least, I think we'll be adding an animal today, but there's also one other thing that I want to tackle that'll tackle, that'll talk about, tackle, talk, you know what I mean. I'll talk about in just a second. Giant ant eater. Did they change how? There we go. Giant ant eater. So for the Baird's tape here, we have a male, female. We're okay. 
And oh, okay, you know what? It's been way too long since I've looked a baby beard's tape here in the face. These guys are just so cute. They're just so adorable. I can never get enough. They're just so cute. All right, bad my field. <laughs> I had no words. I have no comment. They're adorable. They're adorable. I love them. I absolutely love them. Uh, I absolutely love them. I really want to go back to the zoo. I feel like it's a little. I feel like it's still not really a, a good time to do so. I really want to go back to the zoo. All right, Teresa over here did have a baby, Gabby. Uh, so that's good, Teresa. You are what genetically terrible. That's what you are. That's okay though. Let's go ahead to animal trading. Let's go ahead and take a look at animal storage. No, let's take a look at our. Uh, rewards. Reset all filters. We got a cheetah. We got a nyala. We got an Indian elephant. Black wildebeest. Common ostrich. Indian elephant. And a bear tapir. Okay, we have a female bear tapir. I again, I need to remember to check this every time. Every time. I don't want to transfer them to animal storage because then when a trade session comes, I'm going to uh, by mistake trade one out, and then I'm going to be like, wow, great, we got those rewards, and then we never even, um, you know took advantage of them or use them or, or what have you. Because uh, they always come with solid genes, you know, and you want to try and at least integrate them into your uh, your zoo. Uh, but okay, so we have no giant anteater. So to the animal market we go. I think in animal storage, even if we do have a giant anteater, uh, they will be related, right? So like Fernando over here, if I compare mates, compare you to uh, Teresa, who has given a recent birth, are you not related? I guess they're not. I guess they're not. Okay, so we can bring Fernando in to mate with Teresa because that should, I mean, you know, we can see right away that helps counteract some of the really poor stats, especially as far as like immunity is concerned. Fertility is going to skyrocket. Size might take a bit of a hit because of Fernando, but hey, that's good. At least we have somebody. I could have sworn they were related, but I, I guess I'm wrong. Guess I'm wrong. I guess Teresa was adopted directly. So, uh, right. Okay, that makes sense then. So, Fernando, let's go ahead and get you in here, buddy. That's good. That works out. I'm glad I didn't trade one in uh, before checking my stored animals. Go ahead and send you to the zoo. And I'm fairly certain you were born here. So, over to Pachamama's garden. I don't think we need quarantine or any of that stuff. Hopefully. Over to Pachamama's garden. And that's that taken care of. But on the topic of uh, rewards, actually, I wanted to talk about really quickly the current community challenge. I don't know if we'll be able to con contribute. Con I always uh, contribute and contribute always throw, throw me off. Like I, I know the words. I just mean like when I'm speaking quickly. Uh, it's, it's one of those words. Uh, but yeah, this is a, it would be nice to contribute to this, uh, uh, to this community challenge here to help release 70,000 three-star endangered animals. This week's community challenge is focused on releasing three-star endangered animals, one of the many groups that is worth learning more about and finding ways to help. Good luck, zookeepers. So we're about a third of the way there, just slightly over a third of the way there. Um, two days left. I wouldn't be surprised if we fail this community challenge, actually. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't know if, uh, if two days is enough time to, to, to finish this off. And it's another case where, like, I don't know. There's a lot of variables here. Three star and endangered, and that's quite a big number. So I don't know if, uh, if we'll be able to accomplish this one, but we might be able to, uh, again, contribute and, and help, it, uh, help it work out. Now, I wish I could more quickly... Oh, let's see. Uh, like, I wish I could, like, click, you know, filter by endangered or something and then, and then see only the endangered animals. But, uh, for example, the, you know, vulnerable, um, endangered African wild dog. All right, I'm sure, I'm sure we have some African painted dogs that are, uh, that are, uh, three star, right? We must. We must. For animals. Oh, for real. Great. <laughs> I forgot about, uh, I guess this must have been just a couple of sessions ago. I'm not going to trade uh, trade trade out the uh, remnants of the pack. And I mean, these guys aren't even three star. Now, again, just as a reminder, if, if I recall correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the star rating is determined by how popular an animal is in your zoo. So it's not about the animal itself, but more about the um, you know how popular it's been 
in your zoo and we of course are uh, you know there's a there's a longevity requirement there they need to have been in your zoo uh, in an enclosure for a long enough time for people to have an opinion about them and only then will you get the uh, uh, only then will they start getting a star rating that's higher than just one we have some animals like that but you know are they also the endangered one I don't know uh, I don't know the bonobo where are you I believe bonobo is on this side Bonobo, 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 where are you? We need like a, a candy shop um, guest facility so we can call it like Bon Bon Bonobo or something. Bon, yeah, Bon 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 Bonobo, something like that, something like that. Uh, it's even over here, a baby is just two star. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if our uh, um, one that needs renaming here is, oh, we do have a three star. Male Bonobo, but it's they're 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 a couple, they're a pair. Do I really want to do that? Do I really want to split them up? That is what I mean about these challenges. Sometimes they can be a little, uh, I don't know, a little a little a little much. Uh, now now, granted, I'm just looking at my own situation, but I wouldn't be surprised if others are in a similar boat. Like unless you breed for a challenge, uh, and there are some breeding challenges out there. I don't participate in breeding challenges because I don't have like a separate zoo where all I do is just have the animals make babies, right? Uh, God, these guys are so cute. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I feel like there are a couple of people out there who are still playing, uh, what is this, two-year-old game now, right? When did, when did this release? In November of 2019, was it? Or was it September? So anyway, a near two-year-old game, right? I, I feel like there maybe were a lot of people who were playing it in that way, having a, a breeding zoo, and every time a challenge would come up, they would be like, okay, let's do this, because that's how they enjoyed the game. It was perfectly cool. Uh, it's not necessarily how I enjoy a, a game like this, but, you know, that's how they enjoyed the game, and that's that's perfectly fine. If uh, if you like um, that kind of approach, that's cool. Uh, but I feel like, you know, again, the game is now two years old, so there are fewer of uh, that kind of players still playing. I feel like the people who are uh, not... not This is a, it's a general statement, obviously. There are some of them... Uh, some people who play in that way still playing, but I feel like by and large the people who are playing are people like myself who are playing for you know uh, my own enjoyment, yes, but also like an audience and a and a and a and a, and a storyline is a weird one. That's not the word I'm looking for, but like for for more of a like for myself, there's this franchise mode, right? Like there's an objective, so to speak. Some people are doing some interesting visual things in sandbox mode. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, you're not going to be focusing on breeding if you're doing enclosure building, uh, you know, purely enclosure building uh, in sandbox mode. Uh, so, you know, you've got that. You've also got people who are just playing, you know, for the sake of playing. Like, uh, not, not everybody who's playing is either a, uh, either has a breeding zoo or is a YouTuber. That's not, just to be clear, that's not what I'm saying. But, you know, some people are just playing casually or just having a good time, enjoying the, the game and not worrying, not even caring about... Uh, Challenges. Some folks, I'm sure, are uh, not even aware when a challenge comes through because it's just not what they care about, and they're still playing the game, just having a good time, chilling, and 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 challenging themselves in different ways. Uh, but I feel like that that what are you are you okay? Okay, this is just full. Can we get this emptied out, please? <laughs> God. Um, but yeah, point being, uh, I feel like some of that audience that was really you know bent on. On, on getting those numbers up and and, and getting the the hundred percent uh, genes and 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 getting the the you know gold star highest rating uh, rate, rated animals and all that kind of stuff I feel like a lot of that audience has uh, probably you know moved on again as the game gets older some are still around but I feel like a lot of it has probably moved on and then you get to, into a situation that I'm in right now it's like okay we do have a giant otter uh, that we could uh, send off that we could release. But that's it. We just have, okay, two. We have two giant otters. Two out of 70,000 animals. I'm barely making a dent. So is there a point in me sending these guys off anyway? You know what I mean? Like, and then for some people, the answer is no. It's like, well, no, what's the point? I'm just losing out on animals for no real, uh, you know, reason, real end goal or anything. But for myself over here, you know what? Fine. Let's go ahead and release to the wild. Ricardo. Off you go, buddy. We've got plenty of otters, so we'll, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. And let's go ahead and get Fernando. One Fernando comes, another Fernando must Fernando, I guess. 
uh, over to the wild with you. Off you go. And I guess that'll give us a bit of a contribution at least, right? Yeah, those are our two. At least we'll get some rewards. Five. I don't think we'll even hit five, honestly. Still at 37%, so we didn't make like a massive difference <laughs> with our two animals. Now again, the Bonobo, because they're a pair, it feels bad to separate them and all that. We're not going to do that. Sorry, that's not what I meant. I meant Zupedia. Right, so that's a giant otter. I'm also wondering, do I really want to go into Elitsu North to uh, to get some of these guys? But it doesn't look like we've come across too many who are at Elitsu North. Uh, we're good, we're good. And sometimes we've hung out with like the bears and stuff, though. The Indian elephant. We do have some Indian elephants. I wouldn't be surprised if none of them are three stars, though. I'll think about it. I mean, y'all let me know what you think. Uh, I feel like uh, those two... Uh... <laughs> I just love this image so much. I feel like those two... Um... Those two... Uh... <laughs> otters. Sorry, the word was escaping me. Those two otters may have just been... Uh... Sent off to a... Uh pointless cause, if you will. A little unfortunate. Pygmy hippos. We do have, again, pygmy hippos. That's the thing. So many of these animals are just, uh, they only come in in, in, in in a set of three, you know? Mom, dad, and a, and a baby. And anymore, they start uh, getting upset. So you don't really store them in in an enclosure. And then you get, uh, you get this situation. There's only three of them. They really want to split this family up, this beautiful family up? No, not really. I, you know, I think I'm done looking at the challenge. I think I think I've got my answer with regards to our ability to uh, help with this challenge. I just I feel bad ripping you know families apart and stuff like that. It's just not cool. I, I, it bothers me. It's just like um, you know I genu I feel like wow I wish I didn't have to do that. Now yes you might argue oh it's for the greater good but like you know it's easy to say when it's not your family. Right? <laughs> it's easy to say when it's not your own uh, circumstances. It's for the greater good. So I'm uh, I'm gonna not uh, not tear apart any any of these. Uh, animal families. I mean, some of them are, are less social, less, uh, you know, tied to their mates and stuff, I guess. But, I mean, like, can you imagine getting getting rid of some of these uh, penguins? I mean, they're, 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 not even, they're not even a concern, so it's not even a conversation. But, like, damn, you mate for life, and then all of a sudden, they're gone. They just disappear one day. I guess that's the reality for some of them in the wild as well. All right, collect all unclaimed rewards. We'll get what we can get over here. For our two released animals, nice 75 conservation credits. That was uh, well worth it. Um, okay, this is wild. We're we're among the, some of the top percentile of, of of helping. Yeah, I don't think this challenge has much of a chance. I think the devs need to kind of like um, adapt the challenges to the reality of the current kind of a player uh, count, if you will. Uh, it's definitely something they need to uh, they need to do. Uh, over to Finn over here. So Finn has low welfare, social, not enough space. Oh, I see what's happened here. You've gotten stuck on this rock. Didn't used to be a thing, but it might be from the latest update, and this is the first we're seeing of it, because it was there last session as well, right? Uh, but the Nile Monitor. Okay, so Hamad and Yazid. So I've been told that this means they are in the Trade Center. They need to be brought back out of the Trade Center and then sent back in, because... The game thinks they're in a box in the zoo, where in reality they're in a box, yes, perhaps, but in the Trade Center. Uh, and the game does not like that, and we of course don't like the red notification. That doesn't actually have any bearing on anything, so why don't we go ahead and find... Hamad and Yazid. Hamad... I'm assuming is you, at the Trade Center, yeah, and Yazid, Yazid. Oh yeah, I could also just, you know, release them, I guess. You know what? The comment suggested we move them back in and then put them back in the trade center or whatever. I'm going to move them back in at least. Because, God forbid, I release them from inside the trade center and the game doesn't realize what happened and then we forever have these red notifications. I would, oh God, that would not be ideal. Go ahead and get the uh, mechanic over here ASAP. Nyati Plains Habitat Cleanliness is a disease risk. Keeper has been urgently assigned. Okay, let's get this place cleaned up. Oh dear Lord. Oh no. Oh, this is not okay. Oh, it's really not okay. I wonder if we need uh, more keepers for this region specifically. Wouldn't be a terrible idea. Before we get to that, though, mechanic research completed on what? This would be our North Africa theme fully completed. Okay, excellent. Uh, over to vet research. This is completed on... 
the African buffalo. Not fully completed, but a fair bit of progress. We do need uh, some more research going on over here. So let's go ahead and send... Let's go ahead and send... Okay, first of all, let's find our animals. We've got the aardvark and the meerkat, right? Let's go with the meerkat. I would like to do them both at the same time, but I want to make sure there's somebody going around and checking up on animals as well, right? We have a lot of animals to do research on. But uh, Mike and something else, let's get you on the aardvark and... Ashley Horn, let's get you on the meerkat. Uh, the meerkat especially because I want to get those toys that are not yet uh, unlocked, right? There's actual items that we have to unlock for the meerkat as well as the fun facts and stuff, of course. Uh, yeah. And you know what? I don't think we've read the Western Chimpanzee fun fact, so I think we'll spend just a moment to, uh, to do that right now before we go ahead and, uh, again, potentially, I think, add a new animal. Uh, that's not what I meant. I meant research status. I'm, I'm like fairly confident. No one said anything in the comments. Uh, so, you know, y'all, I think maybe either don't remember or remember just as well as I do, uh, which is fair because uh, you'd think I'd remember. But some of this, this this seems unfamiliar, which tells me that we didn't read these. Let's go ahead and assume we didn't and uh, take a look at them. So fun fact number one is it, it'll, it'll also be funny if we did read these and I completely forgot them between then and now and all these fun facts take me by surprise. That'd be pretty funny. All right, fun fact number one. Western chimpanzees are the only subspecies of chimp that makes spears to hunt other primates. Chimps can be very aggressive, and in the wild, they will plan attacks and ambushes on rival groups. See, now that one sounds familiar, and yet at the same time, blows my mind. That is, I mean, it, again, that's... Uh, the, 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 the connection between us and them, as far as uh, tool use and intelligence and stuff, is, like, undeniable. Spears? Like, come on. Right? That's really cool. Chimps can be very aggressive in the wild. They will plan attacks and ambushes on rival groups. I really wish we could, again, just get some insight on animal thinking when it comes to that kind of stuff. Ambushes. So, uh, I assume when the game states it like that, uh, they mean very specific types of ambushes. I don't know if they're setting like baits, bait and stuff like that. Uh, but I assume they mean very specific types of ambushes. And it's like, okay, well, what do you mean? Um, because many animals... Well, actually, the more I think about it, you don't really, if you're, if you're a predator, you don't really set up an ambush per se. You might be on the prowl. You might sneak up on an enemy, on an enemy. <laughs> you might sneak up on your, uh, you know, lunch or dinner, and then you pounce and you attack. That's not really an ambush. An ambush is when you lay in wait where you expect somebody to be, and then you attack them. There's a difference between hunting uh, and, and, and ambushing in that sense. So, uh, so no, what I, what I was originally going to say is like, you know, many animals ambush, but no, they don't. Many animals will sneak up on the hunt because they don't want to get spotted. Uh, not many animals set up an ambush. It's not like, you know, uh, and maybe I'm wrong, but it's not like cheetahs are just kind of like waiting by the watering hole unless they've gone to have water themselves. They're not just waiting by the watering hole thinking, oh, you know what? The, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the gazelle will be here, you know, quarter past nine to have its uh, morning drink and that's when i'll get them right uh, fun fact number two chimpanzees have been successfully taught sign language washo a wild born chimp who was captured by the u.s air force and subsequently lived with two researchers from the university of nevada learned 350 signs and taught some of them to her son that to me is the big one that 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 latter bit is is huge uh, and obviously teaching sign language to an animal is huge as well. But to me, that's more akin to like, okay, there, we, we, teaching animals stuff is a thing we are very familiar with, um, it, it, to varying degrees. Sign, the fact that it's sign language is what makes it so mind blowing. It's like, holy crap, these animals, they understand sign language and, and chimpanzees aren't the only ones who do. Um, but the, again, this goes back to the scorpion tail thing from, from, from last time. The, the passing on of the knowledge is so interesting. And, and this even more so, you know, t ripping the sting off a scorpion. Okay, there's a natural element to that. One could say it's like, it used to be instinctual and then it eventually had to become taught knowledge for whatever reason, right? Let's say. Sign language, as far as I know, <laughs> does not come naturally to chimpanzees. So the fact that they're able to teach their children, their offspring, progeny, something that they themselves were taught by a different species. I don't, just blows my mind. Uh, and, and the fact that sometimes 
they from like stories that I've heard. When I say story, I mean like uh, accounts, not like fictional stories. From accounts that I've like heard and read about, a lot of the time, uh, you know, n not specifically chimpanzees alone, but other uh, uh, other primates as well. They will uh, they will they will adopt and teach. Uh, you know, if if there's a need for an adoption, they will sometimes adopt and and, and pass skills on to their adopted uh, offspring. Um, a lot of the time, it's uh, you know without any prompting or anything like that. So it is really interesting. I mean, one thing I'd love to know, actually, I would love to like just know how how do you the capacity to teach is wild. The capacity to teach is insane because it's 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 not just do you have to understand a thing, you have to understand it well enough that you're able to get somebody else to understand it. Because when these when the, when the offspring now is able to also communicate in sign language, they're not just throwing up signs because they've seen somebody else do it. It's not just a visual, you know, reflection of, of, of somebody else. It's an actual form of communication. It just blows my mind, this stuff. So I could, I could talk about this stuff for, for hours, as, as you very well know. Fun fact number three. Chimpanzees have been observed collecting fermented alcohol sap from palm trees and leaves and drinking it. They seem to enjoy alcohol, and when an alcohol source is discovered, they will return to it. Maybe that's why they get ambushed so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ambushes on rival groups of chimpanzees, right? So that's, I mean, yeah, it's like, oh, hey, we found, uh, we found a little, uh, a little booze trap. That's funny. Alcoholic chimpanzees. Fun fact number four: Chimps have been observed keeping hyraxes as pets for a time in the wild. You know, the capacity to have a pet, the the the, the capacity to care for something um, that isn't your own species. We 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 see this often in in the animal kingdom as well. We see often, you know, um, like dogs will quote unquote adopt you know a new kitten that's come into the family and take care of it and nurture it or like a doe uh not a doe um oh god a fawn a doe uh like we, we've seen that kind of nurturing in, in animals as well by the way if you don't know what a hyrax is hyraxes is the plural of hyrax first of all if you don't know what a hyrax is i can highly recommend looking them up because they are absolutely adorable uh, it will, I think, make your day. So just, just Google, just Google image search Hyrax and uh, have a good time. <laughs> they're, they're super adorable. Um, fun fact number five, chimps use medicine. When they are sick, they eat certain types of leaves to settle their upset stomach and kill parasitic worms. Man, okay, listen, between fun fact number five, uh, fun fact number three, fun fact number two, and fun fact number one, Hell, even fun fact number... Between all these fun facts, you gotta wonder how we haven't had a Planet of the Apes kind of situation, you know, already. <laughs> there, I mean, geez, this is some... Oh, God, I, 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 I really love... I really love just how intelligent some animals are. There's a subreddit that I... Uh, sometimes, you know, when I'm feeling like it, I'll, I'll, I'll go and visit it. I don't often uh, seek out subreddits or anything, but, you know, every once in a while, I'll be like, oh, I'm feeling like a particular type of content... Uh, there's this one which I think is it's uh, like us or just like us. I forget now. That's how often I, I do this. Uh, either like us or just like us. And it's a showcase of, of animals that behave, uh, that are exhibiting like human-like behavior. I love that stuff. You got to wonder what's going through their heads. Uh, anyway, so that is a couple of things that I wanted to tackle tackled. The other thing I wanted to tackle was, yes, the potential adding of a new animal, which it does look like we'll be doing. Uh, I was worried this would be a purely management episode. And while we, again, might not have a time lapse, at least we are able to add a new animal. And the new animal is going to be one uh, that belongs in these plains. We have a baby African buffalo on the way, it seems. But that's not what I'm here to look at. I'm here to find your Zoopedia entry so that I can go to our interspecies enrichment and pick out our next animal. We have the springbok already. The sable antelope, I think I was thinking, would be all one of our uh, potential next ones, right? So uh, let's go ahead and do the sable antelope. I'm fairly certain we don't have the sable antelope already, but just to be, just as a little refresher over here. Species in habitat. Yeah, okay. So the sable antelope is fair game. Uh, the the reason why I want to do the sable antelope is because they look quite unique. They're quite special. I'm uh, apart from unless they're like regular antelopes, I'm not very familiar with the sable antelope. I mean, is an an, is a sable antelope just a, just a just an antelope? Uh, but either way, I want to get the sable antelope in here. I think they look quite gorgeous, and uh, it'll be a good test to see if uh, <laughs> if adding another animal to this enclosure makes things unsable. Oh, boy. That would kind of hurt to say. The sable antelope! 
also known as the Hippotragus niger. Least concern, population in the wild is 48,000. The sable antelope, or Hippotragus niger, is a species of ungulate that lives in so southeastern Africa. They have long, notched horns that curve backwards from their face, a tan to black coat with a white underbelly, chin, and throat, as well as white tear marks on their face. Males are larger, darker, and have longer horns than females, and both sexes graze and browse on the savanna, preferring lightly wooded areas to completely open ones. What do you mean by browse? I've uh like what are they looking for? I know what I know what the word browse means. Don't give me dictionary definitions of the word browse. But what does browse mean as far as an animal in an open savanna, you know? Like uh, what are you browsing for? Is it is it just looking for food and then grazing is the act of actually consuming it? Fair enough. This species is not endangered and is seen in large numbers throughout its range. However, the amount of space available to them has declined. Their natural habitat having been reduced by mankind's urban expansion, which has destroyed grazing lands and turned large areas of savanna into farmland. Additionally, sable antelope are hunted for their distinctive horns, not to mention vulnerable to diseases spread by the tsetse fly. Uh, okay, well, I hope that's not trophy hunting. I hope it's like, oh yes, let's eat the sable antelope, and also, these are some nice horns. You know, that's, there's a difference. There's a difference between using every part of the animal and trophy hunting just because you want a horn on your, I don't know, mantle what do people put hunting trophies on um i will say like again once more we see the uh, the tear shaped dark uh what's it called like mark around the eye the, oh no okay it's not dark over here it's actually light white tear marks on their face interesting okay because normally um normally you get uh it's dark so that it it doesn't reflect light back into the eye um, and it's something I often wonder about, actually. I don't know if I mentioned this during, you know, like when we added the cheetahs and stuff, but uh, uh, it's something I wonder about with regards to putting coal uh, on the eyes, uh, especially in, like, for example, ancient Egypt. Um, you, you, you still get this practice, I think, in, in some very, like, hot and, 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 and sunny parts of the world, but, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure about that, but I do know, uh, or, or, or we've, as far as we think or know, uh, in, in ancient Egypt, for example, uh, men, I think, and women? I know men for sure uh, would, put, uh, would put coal around their eyes, so I think of it like, a, you know, like eyeliner, um, and they would, they would put uh, coal around their eyes to prevent the sun from, like, stinging the eyes so much and to prevent the sweat from, I guess, collecting and, um, like, bothering the eyes and, and stuff like that as well. And I, you gotta wonder, is that, is that, like, was that one of the earliest examples of biomimicry? Biomimi biomimicry, sorry, is something I find very fascinating myself. It's when we look at something in nature and we try to adopt it to, uh, to improve, you know, something that we do. Uh, making things more aerodynamic is an excellent example of sort of constant biomimicry, where we look at how an animal makes itself aer aerodynamic and then go, well, can we do that? Uh, you know, mechanically, and then we we we, we adopt it. We, we biomimicry is everywhere. It's a fascinating topic. Another thing to look up if you're interested in this kind of stuff. If you're interested in like engineering of any kind, or 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 how uh, industrial design sometimes borrows from nature. Biomimicry is a fascinating topic, and it's just something that I've been recently mulling over. Like, I wonder if this was one of the earliest examples of people being like, "Why does this animal have dark circles under its eyes? Surely it's not pulling all-nighters and making YouTube videos. So what must it be?" let me try it and then it's like oh wow this is amazing yeah you know, like I, I wonder i wonder obviously that's probably not exactly how the conversation went but uh, i wonder if it's if it's not an example of early biomimicry either way moving on to the natural habitat a decently large uh uh tract of land and again we have that you know split off habitat i assume because of farmland that's been set up in the area i wouldn't be surprised uh they are a grassland specific animal need 450 meters square again i'm surprised at just how many animals this space has been able to sustain without upsetting them i wouldn't be surprised if things need to be a little bit larger in fact i mean let me actually take a quick look over here i thought we were still fine we're still well over okay we're still way over fine you know we should be okay with the uh uh with the sable antelope as well um but it is it is it's nice actually because i, I feel like this is a pretty large range I would like to avoid making this any larger if I can, because it, uh, you know, it'll it'll feel nice and busy. It'll feel like a big space, and it is a big space. I mean, that's the size of people, 
right? Like it is a big space, um, but I might still need to just inch it forward slightly. And I want to kind of get this done first before we make the uh, African elephant enclosure, which I'm planning on doing over here and matching the size of that to the size of this, right? And then of course there is the uh, plan for the, um, like the the exhibits, I keep forgetting the right term for them, like the creepy crawlies and stuff over here. But having an idea of how big this is actually going to end up uh, is a good, I think, first step, which is why I'm, I'm trying to focus on these guys when I'm working in this general area. Uh, but yeah, 450 meters square, we should be fine. We should be more than fine. No need for water or climbing or anything like that, of course. Species data. Group size, excluding juveniles, is 1 to 11. Up to 1 male, up to 10 females. Fair enough. Male bachelor group size, 1 to 6. Female bachelor group size is 1 to 11. Dominance is dominant alpha male, female family hierarchy. Okay, I really hope that's explained a bit further under social needs and reproduction because I'm curious what that distinction means. Mating system is polygonous. Relation with humans is neutral and guests cannot enter the habitat. Gee, I wonder if the uh, horns have something to do with that. Size, the average male is 4.125 feet tall at the shoulder. Female 3.63. That's actually, that's not an, oh, okay, half a foot, okay, ish, give or take, give or take. I can say that's not an insignificant amount. It's not the biggest, but it's not, it's not an insignificant amount, I guess. Life expectancy 20 years across the board. On average, weight 517 pounds for males, 484 for females. Age of sexual maturity is at 1.5 years. Sterility is at death. Offspring per mating event is one. Nine month gestation, 12 month interbirth and very easy reproduction in captivity. Cool. We'll be seeing some baby antelopes running around. Uh, antelopes? Antelope. I think antelope is plural and singular. Social needs. The sable antelope is a social herd species and in the wild live in two types of groups. Typo. In breeding groups of related females, their young and one unrelated dominant male, or in bachelor herds of young males who have not yet acquired a harem of females. Well, what about the female bachelor group size? Why do we have one of those? If uh, if that's not a uh, a type of group, because yeah, they're saying there's either a uh, oh, of course, female family hierarchy. Domin okay, I get it. So the dominant system is that it is always the females like offspring, and then a dominant alpha male that is not from the same like bloodline, so to speak, not from the same dynasty, if you will. Uh, which uh, which okay, that makes sense. But what happens to, okay, well, what happens when one alpha has children? Does the, okay, so what I'm trying to figure out is like, okay, if a female has pre-existing children, let's say, before a new relationship begins, let's say, right? Those children are allowed to stay, it sounds like. But if the new alpha and the female have children, then those children are not allowed to stay, is what I'm, what I'm getting here. If the uh, the alpha male decides to stay at all, right, they might walk off. So let's let's uh, let's let's check over here. But it's funny to me that we have two types of groups: the the breeding group with the related females, they're young, and one unrelated dominant male, and the bachelor herd of young males who are looking for a group of females. But we don't have anything for this uh, female bachelor group size. Is it because in the wild they don't exist? I guess that's I guess that's it. In the wild they just don't exist like that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Reproduction. Dominant males acquire and defend a territory which females and their offspring will come to forage. Um, I guess it would be two which females and their offspring will come to forage. Anyway, uh, as they do, he will join their group. Eight to nine months after mating with a receptive female, she will leave her herd to give birth in isolation, with newborn calf remaining hidden for the first four weeks of its life. What? Why? That's okay. After this period, it will rejoin the group to forage and graze, weaning at 8 months and maturing sexually at 18 months. However, the sexually mature sable antelopes are unlikely to reproduce until much older. Females remain with their mother's group and likely have their first calf at 2.5 years old, whereas males will be ousted from their family at approximately 3, at which point they will join a bachelor herd of other young males. After a few more years, a male can become dominant in his bachelor herd. This usually occurs at around 5 or 6 years of age, at which point the male will leave to establish his own territory and acquire his own female herd. Okay, interesting, very interesting. So, even if you become a dominant male... No, sorry. In your bachelor herd, if you become a dominant male, you split off and you make your own territory. But what happens if you are the offspring, the male offspring? Okay, then you get ousted. But what happens if you're the pre-existing 
male officer. I guess you still get ousted is my guess. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I really like, there's something about this idea of like, the males acquire and defend territory. And, uh, and you know, the, if you have good territory, then the females will come. And then you have your, I guess, pick. Uh, it's interesting to see and, and to think that I guess the dominance, the, 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 the fighting between male uh, sable antelopes, the fighting happens not over females, indirectly, yes, but not directly. So not directly over females, but it's more directly over territory. Um, and, 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 and having the better territory then results in having, again, the pick of, I assume, female bachelor groups, or not female bachelor groups, but female, female groups um, with their offspring. So that's pretty interesting, but I do wonder, I do wonder how, how what, what determines, yeah, this is the kind of stuff that I like to wonder sometimes, and I was doing a fair bit of it last session as well, what determines good territory to, a, to, a, to an alpha male or, or, or to any uh, sable, rather no, it doesn't even matter what the, uh, the sable antelope considers important. Uh, the, the, it doesn't matter what the male sable antelope considers important. It matters what the female sable antelope considers important because that's what the male is acquiring this territory for, to attract female sable antelopes, uh, which would then, you know, give them an opportunity to reproduce and all that. So like what determines a good uh, space for these. I mean, I imagine a lot of room. I imagine, you know, particularly good grazing. But do they care about the view? <laughs> you know, like, does that kind of stuff factor in? I wonder. I, I wonder sometimes. Do they care about proximity to their own, um, you know, quote unquote, childhood home? I don't have a better word for it right now, but you know what I mean, right? Like, what factors are involved? I wonder if any studies have been done with regards to uh, what good or bad territory is. I mean, I assume the most basic, the, the most basic is good food, good water. That's the most basic, right? Uh, and, and I guess good size. That's the most basic. Um, however, after hearing about, you know, chimpanzees getting drunk off alcohol, I start to wonder a bit more about just how complex some of these social structures and social conversations are uh, among animals. It's, it's not so simple as it sometimes looks, so I'm uh, be curious to learn more about this. That's interesting, though. It's good stuff. Research status, of course, everything is locked. We do have all this stuff researched, though, because it's all the same. Not uh, unfamiliar with that pattern. Uh, and, of course, the interspecies enrichment over here. But let's go ahead and get ourselves, yeah, some sable antelope. Get them in here and uh, and see how they like the space. Go to animal trading, animal market, the sable antelope, please, and thank you. And I think we'll start off with uh, oh, Rafiki over here. Okay, I can't resist getting Rafiki from Raya Zoo. Bakari, we can have multiple males, right? I was gonna check that, but then I saw Rafiki, and I was like, first we gotta grab Rafiki. One male, ten females. Okay. Uh, over to animal trading. The antelope. So we've got our one male. Dada over here. Go ahead and adopt you. Uh, let's go ahead and get uh, Daha. Nope. Alika, Oimana. Nah, these aren't really good stats, so we're gonna leave them be. We'll go with one and one for starters, and then we'll uh, we'll uh, reassess afterwards. Sable antelope is not going to be here, is it? Oh, no, there. Okay, cool. Go ahead and get both of you, Rafiki and Dada, and send you over to quarantine. Very carefully now. Quarantine, thank you. Go ahead and unpause. I want to get these animals out there. I want to see them in action, right? Feeling pretty good about... Oh, I love that. I love the uh, the light bleed and stuff. I think it looks quite nice. Um, right, let's go ahead and take a look at our been in a box for too long situation. These guys will hopefully be hopefully this will get solved soon. Uh, hopefully this will get solved soon as well. Yeah, looks like you're uh, taken care of here. What's wrong over here, Riley? What's going? What's going? Space. I really wish if an animal could reach a place, they could also get out of it. I don't understand how this happens, you know, but that should be that taken care of. Ahmad and Yazid are being carried over. Slowly but surely. They'll get there. There we go. There's there's the there's the run I was hoping for. Good. And again, hopefully we'll tackle all those problems and not have to worry about those. Isoke is about to have offspring. Oh. <laughs> what a dog. Oh my god. I thought I lived in a dog neighborhood previously. My new neighborhood is much more of a dog neighborhood. Um, a much bigger variety of dogs as well. My old neighborhood, it used to be uh, primarily corgis uh, and other small dogs. Uh, and I love corgis. 
Uh, but this new neighborhood, it's a, it's a mix. We get some small dogs, we get some big dogs. Because it's not just condos in this new neighborhood, there's a couple of like uh, townhouses and stuff as well, so you get people with some big dogs. Oh my god, going out for a walk is a, is a dream. <laughs> we have one dog that's... There, there's one dog that I've seen a couple times. That is just massive. And uh, it's supposedly still a puppy. Uh, I kid you not, that dog must be like... Four feet tall. Four? Three to four feet tall. Toes to shoulders. One is just kind of like walking around. Oh my god, look at these cuties with their satellite dish ears. You kidding me? Don't walk away from me. Oh, look at them. Oh. And a third one, too. They're so cute. They're so great. They're just so great. Little noises they make. I do wonder how they did the uh, audio. I wonder how they did the audio. Because the... Oh, they're still being taken over, eh? Almost there. They're almost there. We'll see. We'll get a warning right away that there's a population issue. You know, there's a, a ratio problem. And we'll take care of them then. What about our uh, quarantine? Has this not been done yet? I imagine they've arrived at quarantine. They just haven't been uh, examined yet. Yazid, you've arrived, it looks like. Let's release you to the wild right away. Yep. And Hamad as well, right? What do we got over here? Nothing. Okay, cool. Where is the... Quarantine. There's a quarantine pass for one of them. Dangerous animals escaped. Yes, it's starting to get a little uh, unfortunate. I've seen, by the way, in your comments, you mentioned that I'm not the only one who points out that there are a couple of these issues that are problematic and don't seem to be going anywhere. Uh, in, in a way, I'm glad it's not just me. It's, I'm glad it's like not just you know my luck or something. But in another way, of course, it's unfortunate. I do hope some of these issues get solved, uh, but I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised if they don't get solved. It's one of those things where it's just like, okay, it'll test my patience every once in a while. I, I might reach a breaking point, but uh, I haven't reached one yet. I haven't reached one yet. Make sure these guys are coming through over here. Looks like we're good. Let's see them in action, of course. Having to get used to the camera controls again has also been funny. That's actually been the funniest thing, because uh, there's a couple other games I play where the camera controls are relatively similar, but the controls for rotate uh, and, and, and height change are different. It throws me off every time. They're so well done. They're so well done. Like painstakingly, just like detailed, you know? Just look at that. Look at the glow on like the fur and stuff. Are you curious about a new friend or are you just... Nope, you're just running around. Where are the new friends? Getting education boards up for all these animals? <laughs> Not going to be easy. I get the sable antelope up here as well. I mean, I, I haven't added new ones for a while, right? So, I mean, the plan is that, okay, we've got you, oh, oops, of course, uh, the African buffalo, maybe. Let's go ahead and make you about the black wildebeest, perhaps. Uh, that's the idea, is to, like, have them all lined up, and uh, I'll, I'll add more on either side of these donation bins as well. I think I'll have to. Oh, we've got our first sable antelope. Right, it's over here. There we go. What a look! That's a, such a such a funny uh, looking face. It's also kind of terrifying. It makes me think of you know the like goat uh, satanic goat uh, head kind of a look. Well, they seem to have uh, adapted right away. <laughs> they seem comfortable. Look at that lifted foot. It's the small details. It's the small detail sometimes. A little shake as the head goes up. Fairly certain they're uh, pleased enough with the space, but we'll check their requirements. Of of course, I want to assume. I want to assume that things are still sable. God, you only use the same joke so many times. 
And again, there's that, that foot lift. That, that hoof lift, I should say, I guess. And a little jiggle of like the, the, the neck as the head shakes. Good stuff. Alright. How are you doing? How do you feel? Why are you still standing over here? Why aren't you running around and exploring? Plenty of space, not enough hard shelter, right? That's the problem we were having. We were having an issue with something and it slipped my mind, but it is the uh, the hard shelter. We need more hard shelter for all these animals. Very well, we can definitely take care of that. A couple of plants they're not the biggest fans of, but uh, I think we'll be okay. It's not enough to cause an issue, I think. Yeah, it's just hard shelter over here that's a problem. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Um, enrichment, they're fine. Yeah, all right, looking good. Looking good. These guys have been thrown in boxes. Why? Get you out. Eva, Chloe. Get you out as well. Frankie. Get you out. And what's this? This is the first time I've seen intimidation between different species. Oh no, what have I done? How did I make this mistake? Nod. Must have been a misclick. Let's go ahead and release you to the wild. Right away. Yikes. I thought I had the right... Uh, I thought I was like literally hovering over here when I clicked. Wasn't I? Wasn't I like in the enclosure when I clicked? I must have misread something and, and, and not seen it clearly. Whoops. That's uh, my bad. I'm glad I checked the notifications right away. These guys still in the little corner here? They are. I'm sure they're able to run around. There's plenty of space. I'm sure they're able to move around. Uh, habitat. Oops. Reversible area. Yeah, they're fine. Upstairs, downstairs. Yes, everywhere. Up the ramp, down the ramp. I don't know how you want to call it. You know what I mean, though. But yeah, hard shelter. I do wonder how I want to establish more. I wonder if I, like, maybe create a cover over here. Like a little canopy kind of a thing. So they're able to, to tuck in and, and hide over here in this corner. Uh, I think that works nicely. We could do it at both... Uh, Kind of like, nah, I like how this space looks. So sure, why don't we make like this area uh, cov covered in some way, shape, or form and, and, and give it a bit more hard shelter. Because that's the only thing that's making this enclosure, uh, you know, not work is the amount of hard shelter. Everything else is working out perfectly. These animals are all very, very happy with the space and, and uh, I think they'll probably stay that way. Excellent. So that's another animal added to this uh, massive enclosure. I mean, geez, uh, I did not expect this to work. What I like as well about doing this is we can kind of see how the silhouettes affect the overall feel of the space. You know, you can see the babies, you can see some of the babies, you can see uh, the, the adults as well running around of the various species. Uh, you can see the keeper going around cleaning and it gives you a real, real sense of scale, a real idea of, uh, of, of what we're actually looking at. And it makes me at least realize just how massive this enclosure really is. And it is, it is a massive enclosure. Uh, do we have, okay, I think next time, we might try to add the Nyala, because I know we have a Nyala. We might try to add the Nyala. I think it'd be nice. And we have more female options here. Liza, sure. And Amina, sure. Let's go ahead and grab them. Jabalani. It's been a while since I've read that name. Animal storage. Let's go ahead and get both of these into quarantine up over here. Okay, not going to take that risk. Not throwing some antelopes in with lions. Oh, God, I'd feel terrible. Over to quarantine. Let's go. What do we have over here? Vending facility. Vending machine, rather, broke down. Let's get you in. Vet research complete. More on the uh, buffalo, I assume. Or perhaps, yeah, a little bit more on the buffalo. Fair enough. Cool. Cool. Seriously injured. We've got the vet coming already, I think. Bring you in urgently. And this we've already tackled, yeah. And some big crowds in the area, some big crowds in the area. But folks, uh, with the addition of another new animal, and with thoughts on what to do next time, that is to say, add the uh, the Nyala, right? Uh, I think we should call it a session over here. I feel like we're not going to need to extend this any further, so we might be okay, actually, to get the African elephant and the uh, little, uh, you know, plaza thing going over here as well, as we've been kind of talking about. And, uh, yeah, slowly but surely, we're approaching the... Uh, the, the, the last few, at least base game animals that need including Adelitsu South, and then we'll 
have to regroup and, and, and see what we do. I got a couple of comments actually that were just like, hey, even if you know you release one episode a week and it's not three a week, then uh, that would make me happy. And I'm, I'm curious to see you know how people feel about that kind of stuff about making you know having like a, a sustainable continuity. Uh, but also making room for for other like newer things and and you know for example Jurassic World Evolution prehistoric kingdoms other games as well that are coming out now and in the future and you know a year from now uh, we, it's, it's kind of wild we've been playing Planet Zoo since 2019 right so it's uh, it's it's kind of wild how, uh, how how long it's uh, it, it's been a fixture uh, on the channel but anyway folks uh, I am excited to dive in next time again to to add another animal guaranteed another animal maybe a time lapse oh actually you know what. Hmm. Yeah, let's 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 leave the uh, trade session, the live stream trade session for later. I'm gonna say uh, I want to get another animal in, and then maybe we'll consider the uh, the trade session, um, like I was talking about last time. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I really like this strip. I, I don't think I've ever really observed it from this kind of an angle. I really quite like how we have this like dense greenery. We got a fair bit of like dense greenery up over there, but we have this like clear-ish strip over here. I quite like this. I really like this zoo. I think Elite Zoo South has come together really nicely. It's got some unique shapes, some unique forms, some unique, uh, uh, you know, thoughts in it. It's it's much more of a uh, like a kidney bean shaped uh, <laughs> zoo than our more squarish Elite Zoo North. And hang on, I do need to check really quickly because I was I was thinking about this recently. Um, a long time ago, it was tweeted at me, and I know I pointed it out, but I was wondering if uh, if it has survived. Yep, it has survived indeed. We still have our little uh, bunny rabbit soil patch over here. God, it makes me so happy that this exists purely by accident, entirely serendipity. But folks, I hope you've had a wonderful time with today's episode, because I certainly did. I'm excited to, uh, again, get more animals up there, see if there is, in fact, a tipping point, uh, or if we can go... Nyala out with the animals that get along. Oh god, that's terrible. All out is what I'm getting at. That was really that was that's that's worse than unsable, I think. But anyway, folks, I hope you had a good time. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know down below. Leave a like, leave a comment, and uh, have your uh, opinions and thoughts and voices heard. Let me know what you would like to uh, see, what you would like to see changed, what you would like to see continue, or just if you're having a good time, just let me know that too. As always, of course, a Massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. They'll keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big ol' thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.